Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over optimization problems, and specifically using calculus to solve these word problems that involve optimization. This video is building upon a previous video I did using calculus to find the maximum and minimum of functions, and now we're going to apply it to real life situations. By the end of this video, you'll understand the five step strategy to help solve any optimization problem. If you guys get some value out of this video, I'd really appreciate you liking this video and subscribing to the channel to see more videos just like this. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be using our knowledge of maximizing and minimizing functions to help solve these optimization problems. This comes down to a strategy. So first, what we're going to do is define the constraint function. And this will be littered throughout each of these problems where we have to define the constraint or something that the, the function has to be. You know, it'll be equal to two times the length or something along those lines. So that would be the constraint function. We're then going to use this constraint function to solve for a variable. So that's the next step. We're then going to write out the function that we're either going to maximize or minimize. So sometimes it'll be minimize the amount of materials needed or maximize the revenue or profit created. So then once we have this function, we're going to take the derivative and set it to zero. So this is where the calculus comes in. And this is going to be building upon our previous knowledge of you know, how to maximize or minimize a function. And that's to take the derivative uh, and set it to zero. So where the slope is equal to zero. So lastly, we're going to solve for the variable. And this will allow us to find all the dimensions of the specific shape or to find you know, the number of price decreases or things along those lines. All right, so now we're gonna start with example problem number one. And it says an enclosed box is to be constructed that must have an internal volume of 10,000 centimeters cubed. If the length of the box must be exactly three times the width, what dimensions will minimize the amount of materials needed? Okay, so first we're gonna do our first step in the strategy, and that's gonna to be to define the constraint function. So the volume of a box is really just length times width times height. And we're saying that it needs to be 10,000 centimeters cubed. So what we're going to do is write 10,000 and then we're going to have length, width, and height. So that's our constraint function, but we're not just done yet. What we need to do is specify what some of the dimensions are. So here we have exactly three times the width. So that's the length of the box. So we can write that underneath this, L is equal to three times the width. Once we have that, I'm going to sub in our new value for L. So instead of L, it's going to be 3W, so 3 times the width, multiplied by the width and then the height. Lastly, what I'm going to do for this constraint function is I'm going to solve for this H variable. So that's one of the variables we're going to need in the next step. So it's going to be H is equal to 10,000 divided by 3W squared. So now we've done steps one and two. We've found the constraint function and we've isolated or solved for a variable of interest. So now what we're going to do is write out the function that we're going to maximize or minimize. So in this case, we're trying to minimize the amount of materials needed. So the materials comes down to the surface area. So if we look at surface area, for a box, it's going to be 2 times L times W, because there's two faces for each of these. Then it'll be 2, or plus 2 times uh, L times H. And finally, plus 2 times H multiplied by W. So that would be the surface area of this box, and we're trying to minimize that because we're trying to minimize the amount of materials we need. So this surface area, what we're going to do is I'm going to write it in terms of W because that is what our constraint function is kind of written in terms of. So here it'll be 2, and then while L is really just 3W, multiplied by W, plus 2, again 3W, and then now I'm going to use this part of the H. So again, now we're using this function or this constraint function to allow our like minimizing or maximizing function to only have one variable in it. And that variable is going to be w. So now it'll be 2 times 3w multiplied by this h value. So this is going to be 10,000 divided by 3w squared. And we're just going to finish it up. So 2 times the same thing, 10,000 over 3w squared multiplied by w. Now we have a function, the surface area, only in terms of the width. So now we're able to minimize it just because it has one variable. So I'm going to expand some of this out and then I'm going to simplify it. So this will be 6w squared plus 6w, I guess I could do uh, 60,000 uh, w divided by 3w squared plus 20,000 divided by 3w squared um, multiplied by, I guess this is w's on top here. 
If I simplify this further and write kind of the, the variables as negative exponents, I'm going to do 6w squared, and then this is going to be 60,000 divided by 3. So this is going to be 20,000. And then what I'm going to do is, well, one of these w's is going to cancel. So we're really just going to be left with w to the negative 1. And the same thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to do 20,000 now divided by 3. So this is going to be 6,666.67. And again, we're going to cancel out one of these w's and bring that w to the minus 1. Now we're at the point where we actually can use calculus. So now I'm going to take the derivative of the surface area. So this is going to be 12w. Then it's going to be minus 20,000w to the negative 2 minus 6, 6,666.67w to the negative 2. Now that I've taken the derivative, I'm also going to set it to 0. So this is going to be 0 is equal to 12w minus 20,000. I'm going to bring this down to the bottom for no particular reason other than it just looks more simple to me and I can understand what I need to do next. So here we're going to have w squared as well. So now everything's set to zero. And this is good because this is where we're going to find the maximum or minimum. In this case it's going to be the minimum. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by w squared. So when I do that, well zero times w squared is just zero still. So it's going to be zero is equal to 12 w cubed. And then minus, well these are going to cancel. So this is going to be 20,000 minus 6,666.67 and that is what we have here. So this is going to be minus 26, um, 26,666.67. Now if I solve for w, so I'm going to bring this part over to the other side and then divide by 12 and cube root it. So this will be w is equal to this divided by 12 to the power of 1 divided by 3 and I get 13.05 centimeters for the width. That will be the width value that will minimize this function. Note that the question asks for the dimensions, not just the width. So we solved our function in terms of the width because it said, you know, the length needs to be three times the width, and then we used our constraint of 10,000 centimeters cubed to solve for h in terms of uh, w squared or w cubed and 10,000. But we need to find the dimensions. So we have the width, and we also have expressions that kind of have other dimensions. So here we have h. If we have the width, we can solve h. And then we also know that length is 3 times the width. So we're just going to plug those into our other expressions using this newly found width value. So h will equal 10,000 divided by 13.05 squared, and l will equal uh, 3 times w. So in this case, 3 times 13.05. If we solve for this, it should be a 3 here. And if we solve for this, this is going to be 10,000 divided by 3 divided by 13.05 squared. And we should get an h value of 19.57 centimeters. And if I solve for the length, 3 times 13.05, this is going to be 39.15 centimeters. And I'll just write the width again on the same line. And now we've stated all the dimensions that we were required to. And that is problem number one. All right, so now we're moving on to a different problem, example problem number two. And it's a very similar problem to the first one, but we just have a different shape. So now it's saying the cylindrical can needs to hold 500 centimeters cube of apple juice. The height of the can must be greater than 6 centimeters, but no taller than 15 centimeters. What dimensions uh, should the can be in order to minimize the amount of materials needed? So again, we're going to start with our constraint. So we have a volume of this cylinder, and the volume of a cylinder is just going to be the area of the face, so pi r squared, because it's a circle, multiplied by h, and that would be the volume. We can also say that it's going to be, the volume is 500, so this is going to be 500 equals pi r squared h. And I'll also state that we have a restriction on the height. So the restriction of this can is 6 centimeters, so we'll do 6 centimeters, uh, is going to be between, so h is going to be between 6 centimeters and 15 centimeters. So that's just a constraint that we need to make sure we, we meet. And now the surface area, and again surface area is going to be what we're trying to minimize because we're minimizing the amount of t materials needed. So, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this constraint function and go to step number two which is like solve for a variable. So I'm going to solve for h and it's going to be h is equal to 500 divided by pi r squared. 
now I'm in a situation where I can write out what we're trying to minimize. So I'm going to write out the function we're trying to minimize. In this case, it's materials again, so it's going to be the surface area. So the surface area of a cylindrical can, well, it's going to be 2 pi r squared plus, and then now it's going to be 2 pi r, so that's the circumference, multiplied by h. And that would be the entire surface area of this can. But when we're minimizing these functions or maximizing them, what we're trying to do is get it so the function only expresses one variable. So if that's one variable, then we can take the derivative of it and set it to zero. So here, I'm going to use my constraint function of h, and I'm going to plug it into wherever I see an h. So now the surface area will turn into 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r multiplied by 500 divided by pi r squared. Now I can do some simplifying where I can say, okay, well, pi and r are in the numerator and denominator. So sorry, this will be just the squared uh, canceled. So then the surface area will turn into 2 pi r squared plus 1,000 over r. Now I'm going to take the derivative of the surface area. So this will be sa prime is equal to 4 pi r. And it's going to be minus 1,000 over r squared. And now I can set it to 0. So I'm going to say 0 is equal to this derivative here. So 1,000 over r squared. Similar to the last example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by r squared. And obviously if I multiply both the 0 by r squared, what I'm going to get is just 0. So over here this will be 0 is equal to 4 pi r cubed minus 1,000. Now if I solve for r, this will be 4 pi r cubed equals 1,000. And I'll say that r is equal to 1,000 divided by 4 pi to the power of 1 over 3. And r will equal, if we plug that all in, it'll be 1,000 divided by 4 pi, um, all to the power of 1 divided by 3. So we should get an answer of 4.30 centimeters. And again, we're, we're almost done, but it asks for the dimensions. So we now have to look back to our equation that relates height, which is the other dimension, to our radius. So it's going to be h is equal to, well, we have 500 divided by pi r squared. So if we plug in, instead of r squared, if we plug in now 4.3 squared, we can get an h value to be 500 divided by pi divided by 4.3 squared. And our h value will be 8.61 centimeters, and that will be our answer. And we do have a constraint on h, so we should check to make sure that that h value is within the range. So our range was between 6 centimeters and 15 centimeters, and we got around 8 centimeters, so clearly that's within the range. So this would be the answer to example problem number two. All right, so now we're moving on to example problem number three. And here we're not using shapes, but now we're using optimization to solve for a revenue or a maximizing a revenue. So what we have here is a burger chain did a market research survey and found that for every 25 cent drop in the price of a hamburger, an average of 30 more are sold each day. If a burger currently costs $4.50 and at that price, 700 are sold on average each day, determine the price that will maximize revenue. So what we should first talk about is that revenue equals uh, price multiplied by quantity sold. So I'll just say quantity. And here we kind of have a, a connected relationship between price and quantity. So for every 25 cent drop in the price, 30 more are sold. So what we're, I'm going to say is let x represent the number of price drops. The number of price drops drops. And now what I can say is, okay, well, the price currently is $4.50, but it's going to be minus 0 0.25 times x. So if we drop the price, you know, by 25 cents, so one unit of 25 cents, the price will now be $4.25. And this also relates to quantity. So the quantity is equal to, well, originally it's 700, and then now it's going to be plus 30 multiplied by that price drop. So if it does drop by one unit of price drop, then what's going to happen is we're going to have 30 more hamburgers sold. So what we can say now is that revenue, again, is equal to price times quantity. So I'm going to write 4.5 minus 0.25x, that's our price, multiplied by our quantity, which is 700 plus 30x. And here I could use the product rule and you know find out the derivative of this, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand this out. So this is going to be 450 times 700. 
So we get 3,150. And this can be plus 450 plus or times 30. That's going to be 135x minus 0.25 times 700. This will be 175x minus 0.25 times 30. This will be 7.5x squared. If I collect like terms now, I'll have the revenue will be 3,150, 3, and then it's going to be minus 40x uh, plus, sorry, minus 7.5x squared. Here's when I can now take the derivative of this function and set it to zero. So revenue uh, with respect to x, and x is again the price drops, so the prime of that is going to be, well, this is a constant, so that goes away. This is going to be minus 40 minus 15x. So now we've taken the derivative of the revenue function uh, as, a, as a function of price drops, which is x. If I set that to zero, it'll be negative 40 minus 15x, and now I just need to solve for that, my x variable. So this will be 15x is equal to negative 40, and x will equal 40 divided by 15, and of course it's negative, so it'll be negative 2.667 as our value that will maximize this profit. So here, we have negative 2.6, and we described x as price drops. So what's actually gonna happen is we're gonna have an increase in price, because if we say price is equal to 450 minus 0 0.25, and then now I'm gonna plug in my x value, it's gonna be negative 2.667, our optimal price to maximize revenue is actually going to be an increase in price. So it's going to be negative 2, or sorry, it would be 450 plus 0.25 times 2.667. And then we get a price value of $5.17. Uh, and that would be the price that would maximize the amount of burgers, or sorry, maximize the revenue for burgers sold. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you guys got some value out of it, I'd really appreciate you liking this video and subscribing to the channel to see more videos just like this. I make a ton of videos on math and physics tutorials, as well as how to improve the mindset and learning skills of a student. If you have any suggestions on what material you want me to cover next, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next video.